Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. It's another chilly morning here in the shop. It was 14 degrees when I got up here this morning, but the sun is out and it's going to be a pretty day and it should warm up and be halfway decent. I currently have an order for some special hinges that I need to work on, so I thought I'd bring you along as I work on this special set of tool chest hinges. Now these hinges are for a tool chest that most of the woodworkers are referring to as a Dutch tool chest. And this is a set of hinges that was originally a custom order requested by Chris Schwarz over at Lost Art Press. And he had some special design criteria for the set of hinges for his Dutch tool chest. Because he is quite a prolific blogger and author of woodworking topics, lots of people are now building these Dutch tool chests. And a lot of them want the hinges that I made for Chris. Now what that means is that this is sort of a proprietary design. This is a design that Chris and I came up with, something that I've made for him and for the people that want it. It's not something that is generally out there in the world of blacksmithing. Even though all of the techniques, all of the designs are, are common blacksmithing techniques, the final hinge design and the final way that they go on the chest are a little bit unique. So as I share this with you, I'm hoping that you don't take this idea and run with it and start trying to steal my customers away. Even though there's no patent, no copyright, anything like this, this is one of the few items that I consider unique to my shop. So while I am more than happy to share with you and bring you along as I make these hinges, I would like to ask that you not make this style hinges as a for sale item. For this set of hinges, I start with 8 inch by 1 inch flat mild steel bar and I cut these 20 inches long and this allows me to make one half of the hinge on one end, one half of the hinge on the other. Then I will cut them apart and take care of the joint for the hinge. But this way I can hold them in my hand as I work them and it's a little bit more convenient that way. For those using metric, what would that be about uh, 3 millimeters by 25 millimeters? And that looks like it's about 51 centimeters long. Because the tool chest needs two hinges, I need two bars. So let's go get these hot and let's start working on our Dutch tool chest hinges. I like to start these hinges by isolating the mass for the bean finial by using the guillotine tool. Now with that mass isolated, first thing I do is round up the corners just to kind of get them out of my way. But then I want to draw out my taper. These hinges will taper. One strap is 12 inches long and it'll taper most of the length until it gets to this thickness there, which is about a half an inch or 13 millimeters wide. So I'm going to draw a nice even taper, about 8 inches to start with. As I say, I'm going to want this at 12, but I'll finish up the taper after I do the, the joint for the hinge to make sure that I don't accidentally taper into the, the joint area. And I just do this by eye, it doesn't need to be measured. Now inevitably this is going to curl up one way or the other. I try to pay attention to which side that's on, which is this side. Then I'm going to come back and I'll put a bevel, forged bevel, on what will be the surface. And that way that cup is on the underside where it goes up against the chest and not on the outside where it might look funny. So with that side down, I just forge a bevel along the length of the strap. I'll also file this bevel in cleaner, but that helps establish which side is the top of the hinge and which is the underside and hopefully gives me just a little bit less filing. Next thing I want to do is finish the finial. So this just starts with the, the good side down and half face blows using the cross pin. Start in the middle and work to one side and then the other side. Then I clean it up with the face of the hammer. I'm going to tip it and roll it as much as it need to. And in most cases this will get some filing done to it. I end up with a little step there and a shoulder 
and then the finial is wider than the strap so it has to have been forged and not cut. So I'm going to let that cool then we'll turn it around and do essentially the same thing to the other end. So this looks just like the other end except it won't be as long. This will be a six inch strap. And otherwise it's all the same. And again, I don't want this taper to end up where the hinge joint will be, so I don't want to go the full six inches yet. Put a little bevel on there. And we'll do the finial. And again, the finial starts with the good side down. Half face blows, cross peen to one side, cross peen to the other, then refine it with the face of the hammer. Just don't mess up your little shoulder that you've created here. But you can kind of knock the corners of it off if it extends too far. And it looks a little better. This will all get filed to even it up. So now we're going to let these cool. I've done two straps the same way. So I have two short straps on one end of this pair of bars and two of the longer straps on the other end of the pair of bars. Now this is something you don't have to use my measurements exactly if you're not making Dutch tool chest hinges. As I said, I just assume you not make Dutch tool chest hinges for sale. But we'll go ahead and let these cool, then we'll measure them, cut them off, and then we'll do the eyes that form the joint. Now that our hinge straps have cooled, and I am actually working on two sets of hinges here, so I've got four straps, or four pairs of straps, or however you want to look at it, I need to mark these to cut them. And my hinge strap needs to be 12 inches long, based on my standard hinge that I offer, but I need enough here to roll up to make the eye or the knuckle joint for the hinge, so I go to 13 and a half inches. So that's an extra inch and a half so what is that, about uh, 37 millimeters or something like that, that I add to allow for the, the eye of the hinge. And this one should be 6 inches, but again, I add an inch and a half, so that makes it 7.5 inches. And it just so happens that in most cases, it leaves me a nice little piece right here that's scrap. And that is usually just ideal to put a little little loop on to make the hasp that I usually offer with these hinges. So I just use one hinge to mark the other. But check, check your ends here. If one of them is a little long or a little short, adjust the ends before you make your marks. Like this one's a little short here, so I'm going to slide that over and make my mark there, and then that works out just fine. I'm going to go cut these on the shear. You could cut them at the anvil with a hardy. You can use a shear. You can use a bandsaw, hacksaw. Doesn't matter. Whatever you've got, just go ahead and cut them off at the line. So that gives me my four long straps and my four short straps to make two sets of hinges. The next thing we need to do is roll the eye up. And only one of these little pieces that came out of the middle is really big enough for a hasp. But that at least gives me one I don't have to cut out of a fresh piece of material. But as we get ready to roll the eyes up, we have to think about which side of the hinge we're going to roll the eye towards. And this is where these hinges start to be unique and different from other hinges. Now the Dutch tool chest has a sloped top and a back wall. And it looks sort of vaguely like that. There's a lot more going on down here. But these hinges typically mount to the back of the back wall. The eye is mortised into the, the back wall and then the other strap goes down the inside of the, the lid. So this, the show surface on the short back strap 
is on one side of the hinge and the show surface on this strap is on the other side of the hinge. So the knuckles are opposites. This knuckle on the long strap rolls to the, the show side and on the short strap the knuckle rolls away from the show side. Now when you do a strap you should bevel the end of the the hinge so that this tucks in nicely. That way when you roll the strap up the bevel tucks in right about there and gives you a very nice clean eye. So this is the, the eighth inch thickness of the hinge here. So that bevel is important and they need to be on opposite sides on both of these hinges. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just grind the bevel in. You can cut it in, you can forge it in, whatever. I want to grind the bevel on the show side so that it rolls to the back. This one I want to grind the bevel on the back side so it rolls to the front. I hope that makes at least a little bit of sense. It might make more sense when we actually start forging. For this part of the process you're going to need a drift pin the size you want the inside of your eye are very slightly smaller so that you can drill it for a more accurate eye size. In this case it's quarter inch or about six millimeters. And this pair of tongs, this offset tongs from Off Center Tool Works, seems to work really well for holding the, the hinge mid strap and I really like those for doing this. So those are the ones I'm going to use for most of this, but whatever tongs you have that work. So here's our face side of the hinge. The bevel is on the back side, so at the bevel up we want to roll the eye towards the face side of the long strap. Just something like this. We'll get it hot again. And just be very gentle. Try not to just hit it in the same place. You notice I'm advancing it a little bit and I'm working the hammer kind of this way until I start to get that to curl. And I'm going to bring it back in and I'm going to lift on the strap. Try and as much by eye as I can create a quarter inch eye. It's kind of like rolling a scroll. If you hit the same place over and over again you just get a flat spot. You have to make sure you get that in to tuck in. Coming back later you probably won't get it to tuck in very cleanly. That would be the hardest thing to fix. So there I have something that I think looks pretty close to what I want. Now my little quarter inch drift pin tapers most of the way up here, tapers a little bit up here, and only about this much of it is full width. That way I can get it into the eye drive it all the way through to size of the eye and it should fall out once it goes through. But if you need to refine the eye while the pin is in, you can do that. Yep. See that fit too well. Now once that's gone through the eye, I no longer pick it up by hand because these pins do get plenty hot. So you can, with the pin in, you can do just a little bit of cleanup and refining. Again, don't work on it too much in one spot or you'll create a flat spot. But that does give you the ability to work some of the lumps and bumps out. Also look at it and make sure it looks like it's 90 degrees this way or your hinge won't work very well. And that's all we need to do for one, that eye there. Now we didn't finish the strap all the way up, so this is our chance to do that. And this should need very little to blend that taper in. Just make it look good, and in some ways it's an illusion, because when you get up in here it's really more parallel, but it gives the impression that it tapers the whole way. And that's all just aesthetics. Now something you don't want to accidentally do is smack that hinge eye at this point. So if you turn it down and tip this up to match your bevel and work from the back and let the face of the anvil define the bevel, you don't mess up your hinge eye. And that is it for that strap. It needs to cool. 
And of course the short strap gets the same approach, but we're going to start with the show side up and the bevel on the show side. So we're going to form the so we're forming the eye on the back side. Again, this is specific to this style of installation and and not to every style of hinge you might make. Just be careful about not creating any little kinks. Look at both sides, they might not be rolling up evenly, so if one side's tighter than the other, figure out what you need to do to fix that. And you see I'm getting a little bit flat there, so if I work straight down, that will help that. And this side's the opposite direction, so I'm going to work here. And I've ended up making this one a little bit too small, but we should be able to get the drift pin to drift it open again. Got some flux spilled on my forge table, so there's flux stuck to the hot drift pin now. Not ideal. Need to sweep that off. But that helps size that. Still needs to close up a little bit now. So we'll get it hot again. By putting the drift back in, then that gives us something we can roll this around. And it should roll up pretty nicely. Pretty happy with that. Now some people will roll this about halfway and put the drift in and then roll the whole thing around the drift. I've always had trouble doing that, so I don't do it that way, but it'd be worth trying. Now while it is always best to roll this up as much as you can by eye to, to develop your skills and be more efficient at it, sometimes they don't roll up real neatly and you need to work on tucking this tail in a little bit better. And this is a tool I made for doing that in larger hinges, but it works to some extent in these smaller ones. And you can kind of tuck that part that needs to be rolled in there, there, and you can work up here a little bit. And, and sometimes this will help fix problems. So sometimes something like this can help but it can also become a crutch, so try not to become too dependent on it. But that did save that one that was just a little bit off. And just like the long strap, we need to kind of clean up the transition in this bevel. And if it fits across your anvil, great. But if not, you can drop that in the hardy hole and use that as far as your anvil. Or if you have a two-horn anvil. But this one, because the eye rolls to the back, we're beveling the front, so we're not as worried about accidentally hitting the eye like we were with the long strap. Well that's it for the forging steps for this set of hinges. Pretty much everything else will occur right here at the bench. There will be a fair amount of filing and we will have to cut and fit the joint for the hinges so the hinges work properly. And since these need to cool, I think we'll save that for another video. And we'll call this enough for today with all the forging steps. Again, the only thing that really makes this style of hinge unique is that the straps are seen from opposite sides. One of them, the hinge eye is rolled towards the show side, and one of them, the hinge eye is rolled away. So one strap is seen from the inside of the chest and one strap the outside. Otherwise, there's really nothing different about this than any other set of hinges. It's just that one unique feature that makes these unique to the Dutch tool chest project. I will try to find a few links to some of Christopher Schwarz's articles or blog entries on making the Dutch tool chest. So if you want to see what this is really all about, you can go take a look at that. As a matter of fact, I think I will also try to find his blog entry where I first made these hinges, and it was really this set of hinges and his blog entry 
that made a huge difference in my ability to go full-time as a blacksmith because he's that popular and has that much influence. And he wrote a great blog on why you should work with a blacksmith. And at that time, that happened to be me. And that was a major turning point in my career as a blacksmith. So I'll see if I can find a link to that, and I'll put it down there in the description of the video so that you folks can read it as well. I think ultimately this is going to turn into a four-part video. I'm hoping to finish the hinges themselves in the next part. Then we'll do a third video just on the hasp. It'll be a standalone video just on how to make a hasp. But again, it will be unique to the Dutch tool chest. And then after doing the chest handles the other day, I thought I'd present another little option and some other variations of that. And we'll do a video on chest handles because this project also gets some chest handles to go with it. But I've talked on long enough. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. Then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.